This is a grade 7 math practice test for T in Ready on this version of the test. This is question number 20. Use the information shown in the graph to answer part A and part B. So we have the graph. This is really a question about whether you understand how the coordinate axis works and how to read it. The key thing here is just to read your axis labels. They'll do you a super solid because they tell you exactly what you need to know. Now on the bottom you can see it's the number of sandwiches and then the cost. So if I want four sandwiches, I just go up to find where the, the intersection point of these two lines would be. And it's four sandwiches for $16 because it has a cost. And we assume it's in dollars. It doesn't actually say. Um, it tells us later that they're assuming it's in dollars as well. But based on the label, it doesn't specifically identify. Maybe it's in euros. I don't know. Whatever. Now. So the first question is, what is the cost in dollars of one sandwich? Now, you'd be silly not to go to the number of sandwiches one and just draw the line up until you found your point. There it is. And then go to the corresponding value on the Y. And it's $4. Some good sandwiches. So $4 there. For the part B, and it's as easy as that. That was not. This is not a difficult question. It's just if you don't understand how the relationships are formed. This is the time to get that figured out in seventh grade before you move up. What is the meaning of the point three? And this is on the x-axis and y being 12. What is the meaning of the point three and 12? So on the x-axis of three, it's the number of sandwiches. So three sandwiches. And where are they getting the 12 from? Well, they went up here and then over here. And the corresponding cost would be 12. So three sandwiches are $12. So if I look at the answers, for $3 you can buy three sandwiches. Nope, that's not what that means. For $3 you can buy 12 sandwiches. You wish. That is not at all how that works. Make sure that you keep the information with your label. It's really, you'll notice that they put P the letter P choice in front of the letter R choice, and it's because they are not very nice, and they want you to guess, just see the numbers and say, like, well, that's it, yep. You'll notice that I wrote three sandwiches right here. It's so later on when I went to the problem, I would remember it, because this is the type of question that anybody could miss. It's a super likely one that a smart person will miss, because you'll immediately see the relationship, and you'll think, like, oh, I just need to see 3 and 12. There it is. Mark that off. On to the next one. You just turn into, like, robot test taker, and you miss it because you're not paying attention to what it's actually saying. You have to answer it based on the information and not the numbers. What it's connected to really does matter. So you'll notice the three sandwiches are $12, but this one says $3. That doesn't match up to what this says, so that's out. For $12, you can buy three sandwiches. It has both parts, $12 and three sandwiches. Perfect. And I'll write that letter out here. Same thing here. So your answer choice when you go over to your answer form will be the number four, and depending on how they have it set up, uh, you may have to fill in the blank for the R, but they kind of have it like this. That's it. This is just a question where they're sort of trying to trick you. Even though the content isn't that complicated, it's super easy to make a mistake on this one because they put the question choice or the answer choice p in front of r so you just see the numbers and you don't associate it to the right unit or the right amount the story isn't correct so make sure you write your story out up here first then when you go down here you just have to match the story as opposed to looking for just the numbers to be the same